Here the Quran says that they were not usury, doubled and multiplied, but fear Allah that may really prosper. But some of the Muslims may argue that the riba mentioned in the Quran only refers to usury, somewhat similar to what the money lenders when they gave loan to people and they took an exorbitant amount. Quran prohibits usury, but Quran does not prohibit interest, which the modern day banks take. Let's analyze what the meaning of usury and what the meaning of interest. According to the Oxford Dictionary, the word interest means amount paid for the use of amount lent, money paid for the use of money lent. And usury, according to the Oxford Dictionary, means the act or practice of lending money at interest, especially at a very high rate. So in short, usury means exorbitant interest. But as I mentioned earlier, riba means an addition to or an increase above the original amount of size. It is unlawful addition and here it refers to both usury as well as interest irrespective of whether the rate is small or big. Riba, whether it be interest or usury, it has been prohibited in the Quran. Some Muslims may further argue that interest is like trade. So what is the harm in involving yourself dealing with interest? The answer to this argument is given clearly in the Quran. The same verse which was left, which was decided by Akari. The answer is given in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2. Verse number 275, he says that those who devour usury will not stand except as stands one who the evil one by his touch has driven to madness. This is because they say that trade is like usury, trade is like interest. Allah has permitted trade, but has forbidden riba, has forbidden usury, has forbidden interest. Those who after receiving the direction from thy Lord, desist, they shall be pardoned for the past. Their case is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to judge. But those who repeat the offense will be companions of the hellfire. Therein will they dwell forever. The Quran clearly states that Allah has permitted trade but has forbidden interest and riba. And those who involve themselves in riba, that is usury or interest, will be companions of the hellfire. And therein shall they dwell in forever. The verse continues. The next verse of Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 276 says, Allah will deprive riba, Allah will deprive usury of all its blessings and will give multiple increase for deeds of charity. Some Muslims may further argue that the riba mentioned in the Quran refers to riba istilaq. That is when a person gives a loan to another person to purchase his basic necessities, to fulfill the basic demands of life. If a person gives loan and then charges interest on such loan, this sort of riba, which is called as riba istilaq, has been prohibited. The other sort of riba, the other interest which the modern banks take, interest giving on loans for doing business, this the Quran does not prohibit. Let's analyze what the Quran has to say. I start my talk by reciting a few verses of the Quran. I recited the verse from Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2. 
verse number 278 which says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullah that all you who believe fear allah wazaru ma baqi min arba and give up your demands and give up your demands of riba that is usury or interest in kuntum mu'minin if we are indeed believers immediately after this voice was revealed our beloved prophet muhammad may peace be upon him he said that i am the first person to let go to nullify the interest which is due to my relative hazrat abbas bin abdul muttalib may allah be pleased with him previously in the pre islamic arabia there were two types of business that was done one was the mudariba system that is a person gave loan to a mudarib to a, a businessman to a person using trade and whatever profit that businessman had it was shared between the person who gave loan and the businessman and the second type was money was given to a businessman and a fixed interest was charged on that money when the muslims say that the riba which is prohibited in the quran refers to riba istilaq that is interest on loan giving to basic necessities like for purchasing food for purchasing clothes the basic requirements such type of riba has been prohibited the moment the verse of surah baqarah chapter number 2 verse number 278 was revealed which said that give up your demands of usury give up your demands of riba give up your demands of interest our beloved prophet muhammad may peace be upon him he was the first to nullify he was first to let go the interest that was due to his relative hazrat abbas bin abdul muttalib may allah be pleased with him no logical person no logical muslim can say that the beloved relative the beloved relative of a prophet hazrat abbas bin abdul muttalib may allah be pleased with him he gave loan to poor people for basic needs and in return charged interest just like what the jews did but natural hazrat abbas bin abdul muttalib may allah be pleased with him he gave loan to businessmen to do business and on that he charged a fixed interest after this was was revealed whatever interest which was due to the relative was let go and but naturally all the muslims of that time whoever involved themselves in interest let go whatever interest amount was due to them the next was immediately after this was is of surah baqara chapter number 2 verse number 279 which says after it says ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullah oh you believe fear allah wazaru ma baqi min arba and give up what remains of the demands of usury in kuntum mu'minin if you are indeed believers and the next verse says fa in fa in tawallaw if but if you do it not fazanu bi harb min allah wa rasulih take notice of a war from allah and his rasul 